Hey everyone, and welcome to a new video. Special Officer and Inspection Company railcars have been in use practically since the beginning of railways in North America. They are used for everything from moving railway executives and guests from place to place to examining rail lines and attending special events. One type of inspection car that has become common in recent decades is something known as a theater car. Theater cars get their name from the large picture window at one end of the car with descending movie theater style seating for viewing the rail line as the train travels along. Many freight railroads have converted old passenger cars into theater cars in-house. Likewise, Amtrak also has a fleet of several different business cars and theater inspection cars that it has converted over the years. One of these cars is inspection car number 10004, which has very fittingly been given the name American View. This car started off life as one of the original Viewliner 1 series prototype cars, a sleeping car carrying the number 2301. The car shell was built by the Bud Company in the late 1980s and was one of the last built by Bud before the company spun off its rail car manufacturing division to Bombardier Transportation. On Amtrak, the car ran in service as a sleeper for several years and was then stored for a little more than a decade. In 2014, Amtrak completely rebuilt the car into an inspection car. Today, it travels around the Amtrak system, giving company executives and guests a front row seat to the railroad. Earlier in 2023, the American View began another tour of the system to give Amtrak executives an opportunity to study various routes for potential service improvements. In March, it traveled on the back of the Empire Builder to Portland and then to Seattle and Vancouver, BC to tour the Amtrak Cascades Corridor. On one of the days, the car was added to the back of Amtrak trains 516 and 519 for a round trip from Seattle to Vancouver and return. I took a trip down to Everett to follow the train along the Bellingham subdivision. Not long after arriving, northbound train 516 emerged from the morning fog en route to Canada. The train had just departed Everett and was about to pass through BNSF Railway's Delta Yard at the beginning of the Bellingham subdivision. The engineer of train 516 gave a friendly wave as the train raced along on the north side of Burlington. 516 had just departed Mount Vernon and would make its next station stop in Bellingham about 20 minutes up the line. At Blaine, the train rounded a curve by the old Great Northern Depot and entered Canada. From some observation decks in Blaine, the train could be seen for quite a while as it rolled along the coastline through White Rock. Train speeds through this area are limited to 21 miles per hour due to the proximity of the tracks to the often crowded beaches. 
Improvements have been made to this section of track in recent years in the hope that speed limits may eventually be increased along this section of the corridor for a faster arrival into Vancouver. In addition to route improvements, one area of service improvement for this section of the Amtrak Cascades corridor would be the option of adding additional train frequencies to the route. Currently, there are two round trips a day between Seattle and Vancouver, with one northbound and one southbound extending as far south as Portland, Oregon. The second round trip just recently returned to the schedule on Monday, March 6th after a temporary hiatus. Future service proposals have suggested as many as six trains a day in each direction traveling to Canada. I got one last view of the American View on the northbound trip as train 516 went around the corner along Boundary Bay. 516 would make a close to on-time arrival at Vancouver's Pacific Central Station. The old Blaine Depot sat forlorn and boarded up. BNSF Railway has plans to tear down the building at some point in the future. All aboard Washington and other rail passenger advocacy groups would like to see the Blaine Station restored and reactivated as a station stop for Amtrak Cascades. I returned to Blaine that evening for the southbound run of train number 519 back to Seattle. The southbound trip was delayed about 40 minutes on its way out of Canada by a combination of freight trains and marine traffic on the Fraser River. Twenty minutes after sunset, the headlight of Charger Locomotive 1404 illuminated the rails as the train rounded the corner. The American View features lights on the end of the car so riders can see the railroad even in the dark. After waiting to meet northbound train 518, the southbound pulled into Mount Vernon for its station stop. Train 519 departed Mount Vernon after a very brief 55 seconds in the station. From here, the train would make additional station stops in Stanwood, Everett, and Edmonds before arriving into Seattle's King Street Station just shy of two hours later. 
As the lights on the American view faded in the distance, I decided to call it a day. Thanks for joining me for this little trip following Amtrak Cascades in the American view. If you have any thoughts on this video or suggestions for future videos, let me know in the comments section below. As always, a big thanks to all my supporters on Patreon. To receive updates every time I post to YouTube, click on the subscribe button and select the Receive All Notifications option by clicking on the bell. I'll be back next Friday at 9am Pacific Time for an all new railroad themed adventure right here on the YouTube channel. That's it for now. Until next time, I'm Mike Armstrong. I'll see you down the line. Thanks for watching.